We're the nerds and we've got the news. This is the nerdy news. I don't know, that got me. Okay, you like that? I like that. that was good. <laughs> All now, right. How you doing? I'm good. Woo! So today Party. we've got a few nerdy news, a few, a few nerdy tons news, of news nuggets. Yeah. Um, this weekend at the Fan Expo in Canada, yeah. they had uh, Mark Hamill and um, uh, uh, Kevin Conroy together, right. which is a pretty rare thing. And then Mark did Joker. Mark did Joker. Kevin Conroy is ba was Batman in the animated series and in, the, in a lot of the DC uh, animated universe right. things. And for me, I tweeted this this weekend. These, these in many ways, are my definitive Batman and Joker. Sure, I mean, sure. These, these are the guys. And uh, I mean, everybody's done, you know, Heath Ledger is great, everybody's great, but, but this, they, they just nailed it. And they were being interviewed together and said, you know, they asked, you know, what's next? Now, Mark Hamill several times has sort of retired from Joker sure. and then come back yeah. because they offer him something cool. Or like he, for a while he said, I'll only come back and do it if they do the killing joke. And then okay. they did the killing joke. So um, they were being interviewed. They said, is, this, is there more? Is this, are you done with it? And they said, no. And then they said, so what's next? And one of them says, well, what do you think about doing Hush? And the crowd went nuts. Yeah. And then the other one said, well, what do you think about doing Death in the Family? And the crowd went even more nuts. Now, for me, I love the, I love the DC animated universe. Yeah. I love those movies. I think they do a great job with them most of the time. Um, I w and, and Death in the Family was the first comic, I think one of the first comics I ever bought was Death in the Family. That's right. It's so... Um, and you remember we were talking you, about this earlier. They this, had the yeah. call in to decide is Robin going to die? Is Robin going to live? Yes. And you know that, yes. that was awesome. That was a big deal. Oh yeah, and you had to, was it like a one nine hundred number back that, in the eighties? You know they that is for seen it. as kicking off the comic book explosion of the nineties. Right was Death in the Family. Yeah, because it was like eighty eight, eighty nine. It was right there. Different covers, the, end of the... the interactive mm -hmm. call the phone. So that, that was that was huge, big. Huge Batman. So it could have been just story. them playing with the audience. We don't know, so, but of so course wait, everybody's. I'm, I wasn't following this closely. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so they. Yes. Kevin and Mark told the, the like the 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 crowd. Yeah. What, what if we did this and what if we, so they proposed it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I don't, then now everybody's speculating, did they throw that out there as a tease of what's okay. to come or okay. it was it just them, you know, screwing with people. But clearly, clearly the audience reaction was there. So, it, you know, DC should be paying attention to that. But what do you think about well, that? Well, it's like you said, the animated stuff is every DC fan, the first sword they pull out to defend their brand right. is the animated. Yes. And, and they're great. I have all of them. Yep. Uh, they're great to watch. Most of them, now they're getting a little more R-rated, yeah. but most of them are great to watch to your family. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're brilliantly illustrated. The animation is top notch, the storytelling, and, and they always, they're, they're, they're great. They are probably the, the clear, like, superior category, yes. like where they beat Marvel. Yes. In most people's eyes, whether that's true or not, Marvel people, calm down. But, <laughs> but it's it's the prevailing notion that DC people yeah. feel that way. So no, I well when I read about this this morning, and I was actually talking to my comics buddy, and we were wondering, like, are they doing these as animated shows, right? Uh, as ninety minute animated movies because they're going to be looked over for films because there are people right. who have been hoping and, and wishing that the Ben Affleck movie was going to be Hush. Right. I mean, you read that. All over the well, place. And, and, and a few months back, there was speculation that it was going to be Death in the Family, too, because of the Robin outfit that had right. been, you know, in there. And then they would go back and show kind of in the past what had happened. I just, I just, here's my thing with Hush. Hush, Hush was, for me, um, one of my peer group, Jim Lee, we came up together. And then one of my best friends is Jeff Loeb. Mm -hmm. And so Jim made his return to comics after a sabbatical with Hush. Yes. And that came, 12 issues. And what people don't understand, what people may not know about Hush is, um, Hush is a great character. He's the great reveal. There's a mystery of who is Hush the whole movie, but it's 12 chapters. Yep. And throughout, one of the one of the appeals of the Hush storyline was that every issue, Batman battled one of his rogues gallery. Right. It was Batman versus Joker, Batman versus Catwoman, Harley Quinn's in one, Batman versus uh, Riddler, uh, Batman versus Ra's al Ghul. I mean, the, the, and 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 as a movie, yeah. you can't do that. Right. You can't have seven, eight villains. Already, the the audience is kind of getting weird with two or three villains. Right, right. And so, I mean, so part of me is like, eh, are we going to animated because it's being passed over? Yeah. And it's not cinematically possible? Right. It, because... It would I have to be they... almost a cinematic series of movies, which obviously they're not going to do right now because they've got their whole other plan. They're not making wrong. Killing right. Joke into a live action movie. Right. That's why it was animated. A brilliant, award-winning, maybe the most award-winning, right. but it's not going to be a film. So my, my thoughts are, so is Hush... Hush would be great, uh, but Death in the Family would be great. Right. But I, I actually think they, if those, if that's happening, it tells me that cinematically those aren't in play. That's my. Like, I, I would assume that as well. Yeah. You know, and and again, last week when 
when Ben Affleck rolled out the Deathstroke. Uh, the thing that excited about me, me about that is it's, it was unexpected. Because yeah. everyone's been wondering, which villain's going to be? And, and maybe Deathstroke isn't the whole story, yeah. but it changes... Like I was telling you, yeah. Batman and Deathstroke don't fight each other regularly. Right, right. So, so that's, I love the thinking out of the box. Well, and it's smart to me because you know Batman's Batman's Rogues Gallery feels very specific and like they're they're weird they're weirdos kind of you know yeah, you, yeah. Joker and Penguin and Riddler and Catwoman and these kind of and 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 Deathstroke feels very different from the normal people. So you know that we've and seen in the movies, they will yes. have an epic fight. The thing about Batman's villains that have always bothered me. You don't want Batman to fight Riddler. That looks stupid. Right. Or Penguin. Riddler and, and Penguin. Quack, quack. And, and, and Joker. <laughs> Joker. Even yeah. he yeah, yeah, Heath yeah. Ledger, they didn't have fisticuffs. Yeah. They didn't. Be, and, and with Deathstroke, you're like, this is a gladiator. Yes. You're going to have some brutal hand-to-hand physical. And look, that people love that stuff. Yeah. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later, but rewatching Civil War. Yeah. Some of the best action scenes I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, literally. Yeah. And you're and, and that's what we crave. Yes. And and so I, I think that's what Destro give, gives the franchise. But yeah, Hush and Death in the Family, those would be great. Those would be great. And it'd be great if Mark Hamill and, and Conroy yes. reunited. They're just they're great. Yeah, like they're... you said, your generation uh Batman animated yes. was a monster. Yeah. I mean it was a and monster. Justice League and Justice League yeah. and I mean those were really well done. Um, I, I know today uh, you you spent some time reading up on our friend uh, Shia LaBeouf. I, Matt, <laughs> this is an interview that I would recommend everybody to read. Yeah, Shia, uh, who you know, come on, we it was yeah. it was ten years ago that he exploded with Disturbia. Okay, and then uh, the Transformers movies right. are ten years old next summer. Wow, and then he did uh, Eagle Eye, which was produced by Spielberg, right. I believe, or his company, mm-hmm. and obviously he did Indiana, Indiana Jones. Yeah. And I mean, look, the guy was money. Yeah. He was a Hollywood. People were like, banking on him. A- everything he touched was gold. Everything I just mentioned was $100 million. Sure. Made $100 million. Yeah. $100 million, $100 million. And you know, in, in Hollywood, that's... So then he did the whole paper bag crap. <laughs> right. And I knew people who waited in line to go really? talk to him. Yes. And they they were sending me pictures. I'm talking to Shia. <laughs> and, or Shia. Sorry, Shia. But so he gives this interview today. And look, the big hook was that he was almost in Suicide Squad. Right. But I just read it because he actually was, he's very combative about Spielberg, which is interesting right. that he's owning that. It's not the first time he said that. He really, he, he says in it, that he takes it personally that people blame Crystal Skull on him. He's like, how would you like to live with that? People go, you're the reason the movie sucked. He's like, that's a lot to live with, and, yeah. and I won't accept it. And he said that Spielberg tell, told him, don't read your critics. Don't read your critics. Yeah. And he's like, that's not possible. And so, right. I mean, he, he's a guy in, in, in with some tumult within him. Yeah. But uh, he was great in Fury. Yeah. Fury was the last thing I remember seeing him in. And, of course, that movie had a killer cast. Obviously, Brad Pitt knocked it out of the park. Also, David Ayers. Oh, our yeah. Suicide Squad buddy. Yeah. And the hook of some of the comic book realm, because he talks about how he he was almost cast in Suicide Squad. Mm. So you're like, well, who would Shia have been? Yeah. He was going to play Scott Eastwood's character. But here's the killer. He says both the Rick Flagg character, who I can't remember the actor's name right now, but the Rick Flagg character and Scott Eastwood's character were much larger mm. in the screenplay when Air gave it to them because Deadshot was a minor player. But uh-huh. when they signed Will Smith... They said they took from those other two characters to yep. build. Obviously, you got a movie star. Yeah, he gets the movie star minutes on screen, which sure. means your lines are cut, your lines are cut, and, and and again, that's stuff that people don't really always process. But sure. that's Hollywood. Yeah, Will course. Smith signed on. Uh, the whole movie now tilts towards Will. I, I tell my kids, Deadshot is a D-list character in comics. Yeah, he doesn't. Maybe not, he's had one miniseries, but growing up. He was like the fourth or the fifth guy on the team. Yeah. He had a couple covers. He'd do something cool, but he wasn't the lead. But it was like, okay, Deadshot. Okay, Will Smith, you're Deadshot. Now Deadshot's an A-list right. character. Right. But Shia says that uh, he went to meet with Warner Brothers. Yeah. And they said, we love you, man. You're a great acting talent, but you're crazy. He says, they said, <laughs> you're, you're a little crazy. And I love this quote. We have way too much invested in this movie to take a risk on you. Mm. And so it's a pass for us. And he's like, at least they told me to my face. Yeah. You know, but, but it, it, like you can underscore and this kind of segues Matt yeah. to today's other awesome actor weighing in is mighty yes. as, as, as Borat calls him, Melvin Gibson, <laughs> Melvin Gibson <laughs> had to weigh in, uh, with the Melvin Gibson, uh, weighed in, weighed in saying that, uh, 
that he thought that Batman and Superman was a... a, a I believe he said piece of shit. Piece of shit! Yes. And, oh my God, <laughs> Mel Gibson! Somewhere between Braveheart and, uh, and Passion of the Christ, he's a pretty successful director. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, the guy is talented. Uh, also, maybe matches the crazy of Shia at some y- point. Yeah, but yeah. but when 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 Shia LaBeouf says that these guys said we've got way too much invested in this, yeah, that's like we're banking on this movie in a big way. We've moved oh, yeah. resources into this movie that we can't have you like. It, it literally is like saying Shia, if we have you in this movie, and we film you, yeah, and the first part is that you behave yourself on set, right? And and so let's say you're really good for David Ayers, right? But afterwards. You can't get in a fight outside a club. Right. And we can't have that be the story of suicide. So, I mean, you, you right. really feel like these execs, the, the pressure to make these big movies work. And then you've got Melvin saying, <laughs> saying, and his whole thing is, I've looked at the finances. Mel's, his follow-up quote is, I looked at the finances of those, and I don't know how you make money on that after you pay the tax man yes. and give half to the exhibitors. exhibitors. And this is where I want to focus, because every day on Twitter and social media, some DC bro, and it's a DC bro, Comes at me, <laughs> like, hey man, bow down to Suicide Squad. It's made three hundred million. Yes, Warner Brothers does not keep the three hundred million dollars. No. Matt, if mm, I wish I had something to tear, but <laughs> I have two Nightwings. Okay, you go to the ticket counter and then you buy a ticket. That ticket, <laughs> half half of this ticket goes to the AMC, the Regal. They. The whole ticket, $10 does not go into the Warner Brothers account. $5 goes into the Warners, $5 goes to AMC. So now, your movie budget also wasn't just the $150 million they spent on it. No. There's also the $150 million they marketed. Yes. These two pieces make $300 million. So if you spent $300 and made $300, but only get to keep $150 of the $300, you're $150 in the hole. Yeah. That's math, kids. Um, but I know that you love your superheroes and you wish that your oh, it made three hundred. It's keeping. It's not keeping three hundred dollars. Well, three hundred million. It's not. And, and we people, know with Suicide Squad that they spent oh. a lot of money on that marketing. Oh, I love like and, and this Melvin, is not under marketing. Melvin also says you can tell if they're admitting to that much. It was more, and that's <laughs> Matt. Because he come would on. know. I I have done many a Hollywood deal. I'm waiting on those deals to make into movies. <laughs> but when you're in the rooms, when you have an attorney, when you have agents, they will tell you like, you know, that oh, that number's not real. That number, people fudge. Yep. They don't want to report the real because sure. the real number hurts. So whatever <laughs> got out the door is like, oh man, c- can I live with saying that it costs this much? Yeah, okay, unless you're like, then there's the reverse of that, which is, so we've turned into Hollywood Economics 101. That's what Nerdy News turned into. And we're going to continue on this role with our friend James Bond in a minute. Yeah, but to yeah, wrap sure. this up, to wrap this up, I'm not really sure where I was going with this. I've now lost my train of thought. But um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the thing about these um, movies and the amount of money that they make or don't make, you flip it when it's a low budge yes. movie that they go, we only spent $10 million on it. They love to tell you how much they didn't pay everybody. Oh, yeah. He worked for nothing. He worked for nothing. We got this guy for the cheap, and we made $60 million. And now you're don't breathe. Right. Yeah, because exactly. you go, exactly. oh, yeah, we spent $10 million and we made 60 Okay? <laughs> then, okay, so they advertise it. So there's another 10 20 Sure. Then they made 60 which means they keep third. Oh, they made $5 million already. And it... It's a, it's in that's the first seven days. Sure. So they're in profits. Yeah. That's the way to go, Deadpool. But um, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you that kids, it doesn't all go to the studio. <laughs> AMC. I love the no life. I get this all the time. No life held. No life held. You don't understand. They make their money on sodas and popcorn. No, they can't pay for that magnificent movie palace on popcorn and soda. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man, the popcorn and soda. I mean, we'd all be in that business. Oh, man, I'm going to sell so much popcorn and soda. I can have a 10,000-square-foot facility. <laughs> Crazy pants people. Anyway, so <laughs> Melvin Gibson weighed in. Shia, Shia 
weighed in. It's, it's just what's happening behind the scenes is always more interesting. Oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. And, and more behind the scenes well, is is Daniel Craig. And uh, the rumor is that they have now offered him 150 million. I believe it was pounds, which would be like 200 million dollars to do the next two yeah. James Bond movies so they can finish this kind of storyline out with him right. before they reboot and reinvent again like they do every, you know, sure. every four or six movies. So you're Sony MGM. Do you take a risk on someone new or do you double down on Daniel? You double down on Daniel. I double down on <laughs> Daniel! <laughs> Absolutely! I don't, I don't let him go. And man, Daniel Craig, I know you don't know me, dude, but you and your agents, well done. Well done. <laughs> no is the most powerful word. No, I don't think I want to be James Bond anymore. What? Okay, <laughs> here's 150 million. Matt, I mean, it's, I know. at some point, I guess they've got a number. Yes. But clearly, they're I mean, if not that's there true, yet. That's, that's... Oh, I, I, come on, man. They, I, no one want, I don't want to start over. Yeah. And look, Idris Alba, I love you, man. You're awesome. Go be another spy. Like, I, I want to still enjoy Daniel. And, and the whole thing is, I love you, dude. You're awesome. I, I see you in everything. But if Daniel Craig stops now... Yeah. Then, okay, we're going to go to him. But I want to see more Daniel, which means another 10 years. Yes, Easy. yes. Because they do not make these James Bond, Bond films fast. They're like the opposite of Marvel. We can wait four years between movies. Well, they're saying that, that they're paying him that to do the next two basically back-to-back. -back. Oh, do, do it! So that they can just get Daniel, it. Daniel, yeah. we love you! But you know what? Later on, I mean, in, in a segment coming up, yes. there's also a flip to why James Bond may not have more in the tank. Yes. So Daniel, take the money. Run. 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 <laughs> take that money. That's good money. And I love you as the as I, I love him. Of course. I love him as James Bond. <laughs> All right. And then last thing, uh, Stranger Things. Stranger Things! Oh, it's official. It's coming back. <laughs> Matt, you know, I binged it the night it came out. And as I was watching it, I go, I, I think this is going to take, but I'm not sure. And there are going to be people who backlash to it. And I read about the backlash to Stranger Things now more than I read about the people who love Stranger Things. But the thing is, what did Netflix say? It's like their number two or number three most popular. Yeah. They said it beats all the Marvel shows they've done, which is, that's, those yeah. are big shows. Uh, I just, and they've got new characters. Yep. Uh, I think the first episode is called Mad Max. Okay. And there's a new girl okay. named Max. Oh. So, uh, and then there's her brother and there's, oh, man, I mean, they, you kind of go, How'd you guys write all this in a month? But if I'm the Duffer Brothers, I mean, I, I happen to know, like, it, I just know everyone in, the, in their mother is asking to meet with them in Hollywood. Sure. I, 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 I can't betray trust, but big time producers, big time directors are wanting to get their in the, hooks in them fast. Of course. Because they're ridiculously talented. Yeah. The show is amazing. And, and I'm just excited to go back in 1984, one year later. And because they, they did leave so much. It's like the early seasons of the X Files, right. where you were like they hadn't worn any of their concepts out yet, yeah. and it was fresh. So you finish watching it. We'll talk. Yes. Soon. Yes. Matt, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. <sighs> I gotta, I gotta make the time for it. We gotta. Stranger eat. Things too. Yes. 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 And 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 the last thing tonight is uh, we just want a, a quick reminder that we have Nerdy Pop Show gear. Uh, on our website. I wore mine last week. Nerdypopshow.com. We got t-shirts and buttons and pins. He wore his last I week. I wore my shirt. And stickers. I wore it all the time. I wear it all the time. So go on and get those. Buy those because it's cool and you're they supporting cool. us. They're great stuff. Nice it's, shirts too. It's awesome. So yeah, they're really good quality shirts. Yeah, we did a good job with these. Yes. Yes. So anyway, that's it for the Nerdy News tonight. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. I went for it, dude. I you went did. for it. You I, went for I tore it. the night wing. It was good. What? You tore the night wing. That, <laughs> and He's, Andrew, Andrew almost had a heart attack over there. I, I was, yeah. But.